uh, these days. Uh, let's talk about that because that's uh, really a focus for this interview. Uh, I put bitcoins and global media, but there's, there's a couple things going on. One is bitcoins and then how the global media took it. For example, Paul Krugman uh, wrote a piece that really didn't make it look too good. Uh, start with bitcoins, okay? A few a couple of years ago you told me about them. You bought a number of them at about two dollars and then all of a sudden here they went to 240 uh, about three weeks ago. Quite exciting. Uh, uh, yes, well, uh, I, I think I, I was um, sort of lucky in a way uh, when I was doing my, my research for, when I was actually, when I was writing my PhD, my master's thesis about uh, uh, Buddhist, like the Buddhist idea of economy, I started to find that the idea of, there was some sort of uh, connection with ideas of currency. But currency that are go beyond, uh, beyond what we could say, exactly monetary thing. I, I think, I mean, it, it might be a, a little bit contradictory to talk, to talk about non-monetary currency, but, um, but there was a lot of, uh, quite a few proposals going on at the time, which are still going on for digital currencies, uh, network native currencies that, um, that uh, allow communities to do things without the constraints that like money as we know imposed. So I was looking at uh, digital currencies and I came across Bitcoin. I, I, I actually in a in a in a page of the PTP Foundation wiki in, in the PTP Foundation website I found a list of currencies and I started like studying each one and uh, and when I when I started looking uh, at Bitcoin, it became like very clear to me quite quite rapidly that it was something different. Uh, because in general, like the, the, there is a lot of theory and speculation and a lot of like a good like. Um, projects filled with a lot of good intentions, but that ultimately are flawed and don't work. But Bitcoin has, um, for the first, it, has, it, it, it creates by, like, it structures, it structures a very uh, clear uh, chain of incentives uh, among all the players that really work. And on the other hand, it technically it's technically very sophisticated design, and it also really works. And it uses uh, it uses uh, encryption technology that has been proven to work uh, and to be and to be impossible to break. And uh, you put all these things together, and you have something really interesting because it it, uh, it, it is safe, it really works, and it's um, and, and it has the correct incentive to say. And so you have to mine mine these things. Uh, there's there's 21 million bitcoins maximum. Uh, about 11,000 have been mined. And literally, it's like digging into the code to get the bitcoins out. Say a little bit about that. But, um, about mining, you mean? Yeah, about mining. Um, well, mining it has become like a very, very specialized field. It's very competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that everybody, a lot of people already know how uh, mining uh, requires a lot of computer power, and um, and the reason is because the network is 
is set up in such a way that it produces only 25 bitcoins every 10 minutes uh, across the world. So, uh, if there are a few thousand players, at, like, or maybe a hundred thousand players, or maybe even more, and the number is growing, and they are all competing for 25 bitcoins that are emerging every 10 minutes, then uh, it takes a lot of work. Talk about the basic mining part of uh, bitcoins. Okay, so the basic, the, the basic, easiest way to understand mining is um, uh, that you you can use a uh, computer to uh, look for the answer of a very complicated mathematical problem. And uh, all computers in the network are trying to find the answer of this problem. And um, the, the more powerful your computer, the better chances you have to find the answer first. And whoever gets the answer first uh, earns the 25 hit points that are uh, given as a sort of a price every 10 minutes. Now, what, what, it, what this does is not only um, awarding money to people, but by doing this work, at the same time, they are uh, making the participating computers as a whole. They are making the network secure. Uh, that's the way the system is set up. So mining ultimately is our reward, uh, which is fair. Uh, for for the job of for the total job of securing the network, uh, so that's what makes the, the the Bitcoin system works uh, work and it makes it so robust. And on the other hand, what is um, something that's really interesting about it is that uh, it's also set up in a way in which it makes it, it's more profitable to collaborate with the network in making it secure and enter enter the the contest by mining, uh, legit, uh, legitimate mining, it's more profitable to do that than to try to attack the network and to try to use your computer power to, to disrupt the process. So that's, that's, that's really something that is, well, like one of the reasons why, why it works and why it's like uh, such a brilliant uh, product. And, and the, the encryption, and not the encryption, the, the mathematical problems are set up to get harder and harder as you get closer to 21 million. Uh, what? Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. not, not uh, that's um, inexact. Okay. Uh, it, it, it doesn't get, it, they, they get harder as not, not necessarily as you get closer to 21 million, but the more players there are in the system. I, okay. As the number of players grow, the difficulty grows. But if some if, if tomorrow half of the miners decided to quit, then the difficulty would be cut by half. I see. So I knew that there was a kind of self limiting there there's kind of self limiting structures built into that system. So that's how that works. Yeah. What is the magic number 21 million? Why is that uh, important? No, well, that is arbitrary. And um, actually, uh, the, uh, it's, um, I mean, the Bitcoin is, 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 a very, is a very abstract thing, ultimately. It's a very notional, uh, notional construct of exchange. Uh, that that floats around the network. So ultimately, if, the, if, if there are 21 million people, but all of them get lost and only one million remains, still all the all the wealth of the world could be conceivably theoretically, it would be possible to trade around the all human population with only the one remaining Bitcoin. Well, you trade by fractions. Yeah, because it's, because uh, it's um, 
because you, you just make it more divisible. Uh, so you can you can make it so that um, trade is conducted by fractions, smaller fractions than before. Mm -hmm. So there is no magic number. Really. Yeah, let's let's get into the more abstract stuff right now. But for people that are listening, I want to say that. Towards the end, we're going to talk about the actual things you can do with Bitcoin. For example, you can take a vacation to Thailand uh, through Agoda.com and get a hotel and everything uh, just using Bitcoins with businesses that accept Bitcoins, which that, there creates the value and the meaning and the abstraction. But anyway, right now, what we have or what we're talking about are just numbers on the screen. Uh, you watch the screen as these things are mined or as these things are sold and bought. Um, right now it's around $102 per Bitcoin. But as you were saying, abstractly, if all Bitcoins were to go away except for one of the 21 million, you could still hold essentially all of the wealth of the world in one Bitcoin. That would be an abstract Bitcoin divided into splinters that people could buy. Correct. Correct. So, why did they choose twenty-one million, though? Oh no! I there is there is what I, what I was um, trying to explain is that uh, as far as I know, there is like no no uh, strong reason to have twenty-one or twenty-two. Um, that that's the way they they decided to. Uh, Set up the protocol. They, I mean Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator, the creator of the protocol. And uh, actually, there's been a lot of like uh, variations because you know, the, the software is open source, so there's been some experimentation going on with the software. And so uh, people have decided to uh, take it on their own and make some alterations of the software and then create their own version of Bitcoin and mm -hmm. see if it gains some traction as Bitcoin did. Do so you mean, do you mean th th that's not Bitcoin though, that's like Litecoin and all of those? Yes. Yeah, okay. These are, these are the, the alternate currencies, the alternate crypto coins. So they're basically the same, the same kind of program, but then it's open source, so you can you can create a variation. So uh, there are, I think, Litecoin has four times more uh, number of coins than Bitcoin. Uh, and then, well, there's other other changes about Litecoin, mm -hmm. um, but it just goes to prove that yeah, the number of the final number of Bitcoin, there is nothing magical about it. If they just like decide that would be the number in that case. When, when will we finally reach 21 million? In the year 200, 2140. So it's going to take 140 years for all of the Bitcoins to be totally released. 127. What's that? 127. 